Hello, good morning to everyone. Thanks for the invitation to be here. It's always a pleasure to exchange ideas with other professionals and it was a great opportunity to know the city also that I never came here before. So today I'm here to talk about this change of paradigm that is the adoption of PIM and especially to talk about the benefits of the, to the companies that implement it. My name is Antonio Ruiz Merel, as I heard that someone introduced me. I'm a civil engineer, uh, have an MBA in business management and finish a PhD in construction management. I'm the founder of the NDB Virtual Building, a uh, consulting services company and the president of BIM Management Institute. That's a non-profit initiative to promote BIM worldwide. We do conference in different countries like uh, we made in the past in Portugal, Spain and Brazil. Formerly, I was also the BIM manager of Mountain Angel Engineering. It's a Portuguese company, a, build, a construction company, the, the leader in Portugal, and I think they have also a presence here in Poland. So during the next 40 minutes, uh, the content of my presentation, after a few slides about the company itself, I would like to talk about the return on investment. I will start uh, talking with you about which type of benefits you can have if we implement PIM. I want you to be aware that, of course, it is an investment that you'll do in the first months, in the first years, but later on and very quickly, you'll have the return of it. And if you decide to implement it for the ones that are not implementing, and I saw that many of you know IFC, so I think many thing, good things are happening here in Poland, but uh, what could be the, your implementation strategy? What could be your process? And finally, show you some uh, case studies from uh, real companies that are implementing this. So we are a company that has apprentices worldwide. We have offices in Brazil and Portugal, but we are always traveling in lectures and other sharing meetings a bit worldwide. We do consultancies and services, and especially what I want to, to show you is that we the, the entire process that you, we use is based on, on open meme. It was what uh, Miklos spoke about, and I think most of these pre presenters, presenters will speak of. So we work with a lot of softwares. Personally, I work with Graphisoft for 10 years, but uh, of course we are in a global world that uh, everyone is using different softwares, so the process is capable of uh, use any of these softwares. These are some of the companies. We work mainly with builders, constructors, but also owners, real estate, designers, and we try to help them on the, these implementations. So let's start the may, maybe the main chapter of the presentation, the return on investment. So every time I go to, a, to give a lecture or to give a, to a conference, uh, I try to introduce some of the benefits. But most of the times, it's very difficult to give numbers because companies uh, think that these are confidential data and they don't want to release. So the job that I have done, and this is new slides for me, the job that I do is to speak with all these companies and get authorized to show you today in first hand the type of results that they are having. So first of all, the results are from different, uh, four different companies. Uh, Martin Gilles, I was its BIM manager from 2007 to 2013. And then later on, in between 2014 and 2016, as a BIM consultant in Metlu, Edalco, and Nico Real Estate. Metlu and Edalco are construction companies. So I have here four slides related to the return on investment. And the first one, the scope is design coordination. So Martin Gill argues and states that they can save more than 80% of the costs due to rework. So it's very common uh, due to the fact that the designer is not coordinated that the, them in the site, they have to perform lots of rework. And due to BIM, they cut these costs in 80%. And uh, due to design optimization, as you know, it's very typical in Europe and worldwide that the builder uh, during the construction phase works in a way with the designers to optimize the design and make it faster and cheaper to build. So with these uh, BIM tools and BIM methodology, they could, they could save 
and increase their margins in 20%. Metal engineering, another construction firm, says that they could reduce the risk in almost 90% in the coordination phase. So they could find more errors, more clashes, more incompatibilities between trades. Evalco is arguing that they can decrease 40% of the time allocated to design phase. Because I will later on explain that Edalco has a strong partnership with uh, one of the majors, the uh, design uh, real estate uh, in Brazil. And so they work in the design phase also, not only in the construction phase. And they could re decrease in 40% the time allocated to this design phase. Nico, uh, Nico is a real estate in Portugal. They are um, American investors that are in Portugal for real estate the center of the cities, and uh, with the design optimization that we are performing with them, we could reduce 9% of the cost of each trade later on on site. So, only so you can imagine the type of return that you can have, and uh, for the ones that are, I think most of the people in the room, used to the numbers of construction, these percentages are very, very big. So in terms of, uh, uh, Quantities and budget, Martin Gill feels that they decrease a lot the risk in, our, in their proposals. Before BIM, they never knew where were the errors and omissions when they present a proposal to an owner. Now they, they feel that they are more secure when they handle a proposal to a, a site owner. Evalco Constructor could reduce the time to 30% of traditional time when doing the uh, quantity extraction. And now they feel that uh, these quantities are more reliable and uh, they are getting it much, much faster. Nico, uh, due to some work in audit the, the designs because they are still hiring designers for traditional process, so DWG to the documents, now, uh, but they are converting it to, to models afterwards uh, because the, in Portugal it's not so common to find a good designer that uh, works with uh, Archicad or Revit or other software like this. But during this audit, they could reduce the cost of the site uh, in more than uh, 5%. In terms of schedule and control, and later on I will show the case studies, but only to open session. In terms of schedules and the control, Martin Gill could reduce the time duration of the sites in 20%, only doing optimization, not increasing the risk of the, the, the construction sites. So they are not decreasing the time of each task, they are only optimizing the dependencies and the connection between tasks. And if you are from this world, you know that if I reduce 20% of the site, and typically the, the site, the co direct cost of the site is 10% of the total cost of the, the, the building. And uh, so this reduction can be like an increase of the margin in 2% of the construction only because of this. Edalco Constructora uh, now is doing their time schedules 50% faster than they do before and with much more detail and being more optimized. And finally, last slide, in terms of return on investment, and then we go through, through the implementation process and the case studies, uh, it's regarding process optimization. The thing is that Martin Gil, for example, is finding that now the teams are more multidisciplinary. Typically, in the construction firm, we have people that are top experts in quantity extraction, top experts in design coordination, top experts in budget, top experts in scheduling, and so on. But now people are more multidisciplinary. The same person can do, for example, quantity extraction, drawings, uh, scheduling, budget. So this is quite good because with the world that we have, that sometimes we have more needs for doing budget and le less, uh, so we need more people doing budgets and less doing the site itself, it's good to have this multidisciplinary. And they feel that they can reduce the, in 2% the cost of the site because the teams will be smaller. Metal engineering is saving 20% of the costs of the site and 35% of the time 
because they are performing compatibilization of design, drawings, quantity extraction, scaling much, much faster. The same thing, but a different number, of course, it's a DAO constructor that is, saying that is reducing 50% of the time in these tasks. Of course, these numbers are always different because we are looking to different companies with different backgrounds, with different perspectives, with different clients. So the numbers are always different, but what is most important is to that you understand that these companies are implementing BIM for two years. And this is the type, Montegil for more for 10 years, but the others for two years, and this is the type of return that they are having it, okay? In the end, if we have the time, I have a movie with some guys from uh, Edalco talking to you to, uh, so you can learn a little bit of their experience. So, if you decide to implement PIM, what type of suggestions could I give from the last 15 years of experience that I have? First of all, I don't know if you know the Gartner's research hypercurve model. Basically, it says that Every time a new technology trigger appears, there is a peak of inflated expectations. So you think that, okay, this technology is really great, so it will solve all my problems. But in the end, you, f you find that the technology doesn't have all the functions that you dream of. There are some bugs, and you go through a dissolution period. So that's the time where you, you put the software on the shelf, and you don't use it. But later on, you start to see that others are using it and getting profit from it, so you start to use it and, until you reach a, a plateau of productivity. The thing that you have to do is to minus expectations. So you have to go slowly, understand that not uh, this software, for example, this technology will not solve all your problems, but maybe you can profit from it. So you, like this, you avoid. Like this, you avoid the disappointment, and in the end, you have a faster return on investment. And the thing is that you have to separate the reality from fiction, because sometimes the software vendors arrive to you and say that this is marvelous, that everything will be solved, you can only work half of the day and you'll do the same work. And these dreams these, that they sell you sometimes are a bit fiction, but the thing is that what is real is that um, is exciting, in, exciting enough so we can implement it. So, as you will see later on in the case studies, we do this always uh, through um, a cycle of implementation that goes from diagnosis to the pilot. Diagnosis is the most important phase of implementation and typically is one that no one cares. When I ask several companies and I speak with colleagues in conference like this, so uh, you start already start implementing BIM in your company or, or not, what are you doing? Yes, yes, we already have a training in Archicad, Revit, Bentley, uh, so we are doing our first project. And I typically ask, but the guy that gives you the training, uh, did he knew your company? Did he know how does you work, which type of results that you want to have in the end? And uh, no, these type of things, these type of questions typically are not handled in the proper way. So what I suggest to you is that you, first of all, don't reinvent the wheel. There are lots and lots of companies that are already implementing it. Some of them are here. Uh, you can speak with others. Typically, people from the BIM world are very collaborative. You can speak with them. You can call, send emails. Most of them will answer you and give you some advices of what work or not in their own companies. So make this and don't think that this is a minor thing. Then you have to do a diagnosis, internal diagnosis to your own company. You have to speak with everyone in the company, not only the responsibles of the departments, but also the people that is performing the work itself. Because you'll be admired, surprised, that some, sometimes the things that are written in the brochures of your company is not what is happening in your company. Okay? So, uh, speak with these guys, understand what is the day-by-day -day, uh, uh, work in, in your company, what are, what are the things that are not running very well, what are the best practices that you want to replicate 
in the, all the projects that you are developing. And then develop your one, uh, the workflows of what is happening and make some studies on where you can improve the process. After that, and before training, okay, develop your own workflows. Develop, develop workflows that allows you to understand which tasks you have performed, who are the responsible to perform these tasks. Attach to these workflows all the procedures. Try to standardize at most the process that you have inside of a company to try to replicate in all the process and in the end of the site, in the end of the design phase, design process, project, try to collect all the lessons learned and wrote that, write them in your process. This is really great for to be used by the ones that are in your company, but also for younger guys that arrive to your company. One of the biggest complaints that I have when speaking with colleagues from other companies, they always say, Antonio, we, ha we have a big problem because we want to do BIM, but we go to the market to hire someone that works with BIM, and we cannot find. The universities are not preparing these guys to go to the company to work with BIM. Yes, yeah, that's, that's the reality, and it will be the reality for the following years. So you have to be prepared to, when you hire someone, to, to quickly training them to be able to, to incorporate your process. Then do the training, and do the training in a way that you are not training in a software, but you are training in a process. A process that is supported in a, pro in a software, but the most important is a process, because you have different co uh, departments that need to communicate between them. We are very used to listen in this conference that companies are not talking to each other that IFC is really great because, like Miko said, we, in our countries, we work with small companies and we have exchanged files between them. But sometimes, even inside of our co companies, we need to improve the communication, okay? So give the training to, to your teams in, with a standardized process and guarantee that everyone is certified, this is in Portuguese, but it means certified in the process before starting to work with it. And finally, they will feel prepared to go to the site and make a real implementation. This is our software environment, let's call it like this. You can see in the end, you don't see any brand. It's OpenBeam. We use IFC for reference model for clash detection and BCF for coordination issues. We use lots of modeling software, basically mainly ArchiCAD, but of course also Revit, Bentley, Tecla. We use every time we can Beam Cloud for teamwork and uh, Trimo Connect for common data environments. In terms of coordination, we use lots of software. It depends on the client, depends on the partners, what they use, but maybe uh, Solibri, Navis works. Tecla Beam site and Beam Collab are the ones that we are using more. For exploring the model, BeamX is a great tool. For budget, cost, for quantity extraction, budget, scaling, cost control, we use Vico software, and for facility management, RCFM. So these are the softwares that we typically use, but many, there are many times that you have to use other softwares, and the most important is that your process is ready for adapt to another other technology. Because there are, to, every day we have new technologies arriving to the market with nice features, so we have to adapt to it so you can embed it in a new process. Our uh, process and our environment in terms of processes, it's based in, four, in five columns. One is the flow charts. This is quite important and I advise you to, to have, you already have, I imagine, but to adapt it to be more. Where you have the tasks, the roles, like in swim lanes, so you, you understand always what's next step. Then the processes that are very technical, that explain step by step what to do to perform each task. Then you have the standards of your company or, or we, on which other companies have to work if they work with you. The, uh, the BIM is cushion plan that is very 
particular for each one, each project that says who are the partners, their contacts, what are, they, what are their rules, and so on. And finally, one thing that is not very common in the construction world, it's uh, programming. So we are going to a phase, to a era, where uh, we'll embed the programming capabilities, IT, on the, our process. So we are always developing visual basic routines in Excel to perform the manual work much, much faster. So, and what is the BIM process for a company that performs from, or performs, so at least works with partners that perform design, construction, and facility management? We are, uh, this is very simplified, of course, but we have always a process of exchanging files through different uh, softwares for design, checking its quality, and every time you feel that we are, we are mature enough in one phase of the design, we start to do first an estimate, then a budget. After that, we do scaling and site control. And during this process of the, the site, we update the models, so later on we can extract all the information for facility management, uh, both for Kobe or any other facility management software. And the thing is that today, and in the following years, I believe, we will live in a world that we have two scenarios. A scenario that our partners deliver AutoCAD drawings, 2D drawings, at least of some traits, and we have to convert them to make the analysis, to audit the, the design. And work later on through uh, Excel files, maybe. That's the only thing that they know how to read it right now, with questions, with requests for information, and update the model. This is a scenario way where we have the traditional design that incorporates a beam coordination process. Scenario B that fortunately starts to appear is when all your partners work with BIM softwares, and we exchange the AFC files through what we do, the, uh, the BIM coordination, and uh, in the end of the BIM coordination, we exchange PSCF files so we can mo change our, our um, design in these authoritary uh, softwares, okay? But this will remain for the following years because even in the UK that everyone is saying that uh, through uh, after 2016, all the designs should be delivered in the BIM. This is not totally real reality, okay? Uh, I've been talking with several people from UK, and maybe the major firms are using it, but all small and medium are not there yet. Okay, but at least they are trying to go there, so I would say that still, even in the UK, 70% are doing this, and maybe only 30% are doing this. So now that we are going to enter in the construction phase, uh, and we have already the models, this is from one of our partners, our clients, uh, in this the, the structure and the architecture were done in Archicad, the MEP was done in Revit. Uh, everything that we are talking will work with Bentley, with Tecla, with IFC models from softwares that have no expression in the market still. And uh, the thing is that when you are ready and when these so models have quality enough, and this is a big issue because sometimes we see models that are perfect for design. If you see the drawings, the drawings are beautiful. But then you start to analyze the quality of that model and you find out that there are many clashes, many duplicate elements, many information that is missing, and you cannot use it for quantity extraction, budget, scheduling, and so on. So when you are ready, you can import for softwares like Vico. It's one we use, but there are others in the market. You can analyze the, qua the quantities and in a way that is very friendly because many people on the site don't know, they are not very geek. Uh, people, typically, I'll, I'll say that most guys that are on a construction site, the technology that they use are Outlook and AutoCAD. This is the biggest technology that I saw in a construction site. Okay, so we have to give them tools that are easy to use because if not, the resistance will be huge. If we give them Revit, Archicad, or Tecla, they will don't they will never install it in their computers. 
when we have all the quantities and after we analyze it, we can make different sectors on our site. So we can cut the building in floors, pavements, sectors. So we can analyze the, qu the quantities by locations. And this is done and performed in a question of minutes. Uh, which of you are here from construction firms? Can you raise your hand, construction firms? Okay, some of them, some of you. So you know that every time that you ask someone, some colleague of you to perform the quantity extraction, maybe you'll take like one week, three, four days, one week, depends on the size of the building and many people you can put on that task. But here, if you have the model, you can extract these quantities in, in seconds. And if you build these locations, you can t extract these quantities by locations in one hour, maybe. And you can make scenarios and make an, another extraction of quantities. You don't have to bother to call another person to make this uh, quantity extraction. This is huge. And everything that you see is connected with the budget. So every time you press a line in your, your, in your bit of quantities or in your budget, you'll see what are you uh, budgeting in your model. So it's very interactive. Everything is connected. Uh, it's very f easy to find errors and omissions. How many of you that made a budget and you forgot to budget some kind of services that was in the design? This happens constantly. And especially when you have different revisions of design, sometimes you forget to update the bill of quantities. Then you have to connect uh, the tasks from your scheduling with the costs. So later on when you do the, the scheduling, you can uh, also do the scheduling and see uh, the, the cash flow that you will need for that design, for that uh, construction uh, project. You can do the site control very, in a very friendly way. And the thing is that the software will predict when the site will give you the forecast and predict when the site is, uh, will be finished so you can make some actions to recover it if it, you are late. But the most important is that imagine that your designer, your partner that is making design, make a change. All of this is updated immediately. So all the quantities are calculated, the budget change, the, the duration of the tasks, because the duration is always the multiplication of the, the quantity for uh, productivity. So everything changed and you can see the impact immediately. And, all, uh, and because all of this is connected, you can see, of course, the 4D simulation instantly. You don't need to do any extra work. Of course, if you want a video more beautiful than the one that is presented here, you can do always a rendering using tools for that. But it's much easier because all the information comes from the software. You only have to upload it to these rendering tools and make a more interesting presentation to a owner or in a conference, for example. So let's start with case studies. I think I have more or less 10 minutes for case studies. I brought to you uh, five case studies. Two of them are from real estate developers, two of the major real estate developers from Brazil, one manufacturer from Portugal, and two major builders uh, also in Brazil. So these are two buildings, one from Gafisa, uh, this one from Gafisa that has more or less 55,000 square meters, and the other one from Brookfield, that's a residential building. Both of them were mo totally modeled. They started with 2D drawings. They didn't have the opportunity to hire designers that work with uh, Archicad, for example. And we had to model itself to try to find uh, coordination issues. So the process was receiving the drawings, work with the designers in a way that we could model and coordinate with them all the, the problems that we found out. So later on, we could extract a uh, quantity takeoff report. We, I don't have time to read it, but uh, I wrote here the most, most of the problems that we typically found on the projects in the design. Uh, so later on, when the the organization gives you the PowerPoint, you can slowly read it all. So this is the type of problems that we see in the structure, in the architecture, in the MEP disciplines. 
Having this uh, design coordinated, we can now extract quantities from different traits, make the budget of it, and find out the differences between the bill of quantities made from the traditional process and the quantities made through the, the model. And we find the differences. Okay? Most of these, these uh, construction uh, sites are made with a, a global price, you know. So if the quantities are wrong and the constructor make a bid for it and gives to Gafisa or to Brookfield, uh, there is no chance that Gafisa and Brookfield re recover that money. It will be an extra profit for the builder. So it's quite important for Gafisa and Brookfield that we found this, this difference of quantities so they don't pay for it. Okay. JJ Teixeira is the largest carpentry company in Portugal. They have a, a challenge. They were building a. They were, they were one of the partners uh, that were building the carpentry work in the in the uh, building in in Paris, the new palace of the Justice the, of Renzo Piano. Uh, the construction of was for weeks. They want to implement beam on that building. Uh, they have a challenge because there are more than 80 rooms there and they have to perform in a very detailed uh, a very detailed model of each of the rooms and everything that is in the room uh, above 5 centimeters had to be modeled so all the wood panels uh, would have to be modeled with high detail and they have only uh, a few weeks to perform it so they have to perform it four to five models each week, and it was their first project. So the challenge was uh, especially big because of that. So they developed very uh, parametric objects, like you can do it in Archicad also. Uh, so later on, they can, in the beginning, they were slower because they have to develop these parametric objects, but in the end, everything was faster and they were success, successful delivering these four to five rooms per week that they uh, arranged with the uh, weeks. Then we have Metlo. Metlo is a co construction company that typically has more or less one, one million square meters per year in construction. They do especially commercial, residential, shopping, so buildings in general. They start to work in 2008, but mainly for uh, coordination, so 3D modeling only. They made some experience uh, in quantity extraction, in 4D simulation using synchro, but they were not happy with the results. They felt that the, the results were not good, not reliable, and not fast enough. So we started to work with them in 2014. We implemented the process that I already explained to you, a very sequence proce process that starts with that diagnosis. And what we found out is that they were already doing a lot of 3D modeling, as I told you, since 2008. But this modeling inside us and modeling that were done by designers were done in a way that they cannot use because they were not quality enough for quantity extraction. So we try to understand how does the process was running right now we interview a lot of people there. We, see, we saw and read their processors and present a new solution to them. In this way, they could continue hiring designers that were delivering 3D models because in Brazil they already can do it. Uh, but in a way that in the end, the models could, could be used for construction, for in the construction phase, okay? And the thing is that a design model, it's a bit different for a model that you want to use for in the construction phase because you don't want only very beautiful drawings, you want to understand the construction process. So we have to understand how is the site measuring the, how the works. So later on we found out how we should build the models so we can arrive to these quantities. Another thing that's quite important was to define a quality control because we have to understand which softwares are going to use, how is the interoperability between them, which type of properties and geometry, so level of development that Mikulos explained, 
which type of level of develop development we had to put on the model and which uh, check, check rules we have to do it in Solibri. After that, we do the training. We do a simulated project with the information of old project that already finished. And why does we do that? Because people were like, after the training, they felt that they knew the software, but they are not mature enough or they were not secure of their own skills. So we made a simulated environment. We give uh, all the data to them and they perform the task like it was a real site. So in the end, they feel more secure handling the, the, the Beam environment. This was the, the real site. It was a uh, 100,000 one square meters uh, building in Rio de Janeiro for the Olympic Games. They had a very tight schedule, okay, because they could not be delayed because I think the Olympic Committee would not like to delay the, the Olympic Games. Uh, but uh, they had 10 months to, to construct this. During the construction, the design was always changing because of time scaling and also cost reasons. But they were, they were constantly updating the model. So uh, in the site, they have always the quantities and the budget updated also. Some pictures of it. The, of the quantities, the budget, the scaling, and one from the, co the controlling of the site. And some of the meetings that we have. We have meetings there every two days with the, with the team, discussing the problems, discussing what will be the tasks that we perform next week and next month, so we can uh, make all the, the buy all the materials and hire the subcontractors that we need. Okay, the last case study that I bring to you is at Alco, and even that is they are a builder, I brought to you because they are a special case, because they made a very uh, strong partnership with ESER. ESER is one of the biggest real estate in, the, in Brazil, and I would say that 95% of the sites that Edalco builds, it's for ESER. So this allows them to standardize very well their process because they always work for the same owner. And another thing that was uh, particular of this case was that the owner, this guy, Alexander, uh, really believed on BIM. So he was, even that he has many concerns and worries, he makes sure that every week he had a meeting with all the coordinators of the IRIS to understand how, he, how was the implementation process. And this was great because everyone was very motivated to this implementation. And um, as you can see, he defined all the goals that he wants and he asked for responsibility. Because sometimes there are some strategy put in place to implement BIM, but then the one checks what everyone is doing. So he made the, the meet, these meetings, these weekly meetings, to promote creativity, to motivate people. He, uh, he defined a strategy and defined these goals to ask for responsibility. And of course, we improved the process and standards of the company to promote collaboration. They had already a very nice standard in terms of which materials and construction methods they will use on their buildings. So they deliver this to the designers so that, that designers knew what they can, could use or not in that design in a way to increase the profitable profitability of the, the building. And we convert, sorry, we convert everything that we had in 2D in photos to a, vir a virtual warehouse and a template. And these templates and virtual warehouse are delivered to the designers so they can use on their work, okay? Besides these processes that I'm that I already spoke for many times during this presentation. We developed, in this company, we developed lots of also visual basic program, programmation uh, for reports, because they have to produce weekly reports, and this was taking like almost two days of a week for a department to produce these reports. Now, because we have all information from the Bean software, it takes one hour per week to produce a report, so it's much faster to produce these reports and information is more reliable and actually they are making more graphics and more tables that bef than before. 
This is uh, uh, the last two slides. On this slide, we can see that they are using BMX um, to check on the site uh, what they have to perform and also to check the quality of what was performed. And this was, uh, in the priority list, it was one of the first that the owner of the company wants because you want to implement in all the departments, in the, in the trailers, but you want to bring the model also to the site. But he knew that people on the site uh, typically don't, don't have a high degree of education, so we have to find a very friendly solution. And the solution that they chose was BMAX because we, they could integrate the 3D model with the 2D documents uh, and made markups and measures in the iPad. Sorry. In next, the in next slide, in the last slide, I will show a small video. It has subtitles. I was a bit afraid that the subtitles were very small and you cannot read it because it's in English, the subtitles, and uh, the language is Portuguese. But I think now that we are in a theater, I think it will not be a problem to read the, the subtitles. So I'll leave you with the, the movie. I hope that we have sound, right? We have sound, yeah? So. <laughs> A Edalco é uma empresa que atua no mercado há mais de 27 anos, é, buscando a excelência no seu serviço. Bom, hoje o processo BIM ele ajuda a gente na coordenação e compatibilização do projeto. Is this a design coordination of the company? O projeto espacialmente, entender ele como role is todo. Not e para antecipar as interferências entre as disciplinas. As revisões de orçamento que são importantes. É, no processo de orçamentação, também vão ficar muito mais dinâmicas, pois tudo o que é modelado é quantificado automaticamente. O que o BIM trouxe de melhoria foi com toda a padronização dos levantamentos quantitativos e todos os critérios de medição. Com a interação projeto-obra, teremos uma maior discriminação da informação possibilitando a retroalimentação automática do orçamento. É, através da metodologia BIM, a gente consegue entrar num nível de detalhe muito apurado do cronograma, onde todas as atividades a gente consegue identificar e o, e o VICO, por exemplo, ele também propicia que a gente possa inserir todo o nosso know-how, o nosso histórico de produtividade. Então, a gente ganha em produtividade, a gente ganha em, em prazo e a gente ganha também com a redução dos custos. A gestão do BIM na obra representa para a Edal o segundo passo decisivo rumo às nossas metas, que é aperfeiçoar e otimizar os nossos processos e oferecer ao nosso cliente final um produto de qualidade e eficiência. É a utilização do modelo para ser maior confiabilidade na extração das quantidades pois nós conseguimos verificar a obra como um todo e não como disciplinas é, separadas. A implementação do BIM na nossa obra garantiu uma maior confiabilidade nas informações de projetos e quantitativos. Isso é essencial no momento de analisar o planejamento com as equipes e verificar o andamento da obra. O BIM tem sido uma excelente ferramenta de comunicação com nossos parceiros evitando divergências no momento das medições físicas da obra. E a consultoria da NDBIM foi essencial nesse processo, pois nos forneceu suporte e expertise para avançarmos com segurança na implantação do BIM na empresa. Hoje nós entendemos Final que o BIM é um processo sem caminho de volta. Então... So. So. Uh, the presentation is over. Uh, if anyone has questions, I'm available. I don't have the time now, but I, later on in coffee break. Hope that you enjoy. I, call, uh, I hope that you enjoy the presentation and you take some ideas for your own. Thanks.